You're listening to the Voice of Islam Radio. Broadcasting on DAB and via the internet 24 hours a day. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuhu. Welcome back to the breakfast show here on the Voice of Islam Radio. First segment that we have now, and the topic is uh, on the powers of honey, the healing powers of honey, and the amazing discoveries which uh, scientists have made. This is from an article written mm. by uh, Tosif Ahmed Khan from uh, Canada. Dr. Tosif Ahmed Khan Excellent. from from Canada. Mm. And, um, and and just the gist of the story is that honey uh, inhibits the, the growth of many disease-causing bacteria, mm. viruses, and fungi. Now, uh, this antimicrobial uh, activity of honey is due to specific properties found in honey. Now, these include low water concentration that inhibits bacterial growth, a glucose oxidase enzyme which uh, produces microbe-killing hydrogen peroxide, uh, which is an acidic pH, and other compounds found only in specific honeys that inhibit microorganisms. One such compound is uh, methyl uh, glyoxal, which was found to be unique to manuka honey, and it confirms uh, it confers a much wider antimicrobial activity compared to other popular honey types. Mm. Um, and of course, from there we mm. we see that there are many different um, benefits. Mm. Um, for example, wound healing. Um, historically, honey uh, was always known to be effective in improving healing and uh, uh, and clearing infected wounds. Yes. Um, honey as a wound and burn treatment was first mentioned in in Egyptian Egyptian mm. surgical uh, texts written between uh, 2600 to 1300 BCE. Mm. Um, and other early uh, medical traditions, including Ayurvedic, uh, Chinese, mm. uh, and Roman traditions, also used honey in wound care. Right. Now, honey was extensively used during wars for healing wounded soldiers, and its use as a as a poultice in World War One and Two uh, is well recorded. However, the use of honey declined after World War Two, as penicillin and other antibiotics were discovered and found to be more effective. Now, mm. of course, mm. um, th- there are many benefits of honey, which uh, for quite some for many years th- the. Uh, Muslims in particular yes. have been trying to promote its benefits mm. um, and we're going to go to the, into the Islamic perspective in just a few moments we do have a caller um, with us on the line um, and w- uh, we're going to go to our caller uh, now we have Dr. Kath Curtis Hayward uh, who's a recently retired GP from Gloucestershire who is uh, currently working with Bees Abroad um, and Rory's well on beekeeping projects in Sierra Leone um, Dr. Kath Curtis Hayward, good morning, peace be upon you, and welcome to The Breakfast Show. Thank you very much. Thank you for being with us here today. Um, Dr. Kath, can you tell us a bit about more, uh, a bit more about uh, the beekeeping projects that Bees Abroad are offering in uh, Sierra Leone? Yes, certainly. Well, Bees Abroad is a charity that works across Africa with beekeeping mm-hmm. projects and also some in other areas like India and Nepal. And we're working with another charity which works specifically in Sierra Leone, which is Roar as well, in villages around the Gola Rainforest on the border with Liberia. And these areas have no tradition of beekeeping. So before we were working there, um, basically the way local people would get honey would be to climb or cut down the trees which had a wild bee nest and smoke out the hive and take the honey. So we've been training men and women to make a particular type of hive called a Kenyan top bar hive um, using local materials. And these are much simpler to manage than the hives we use in the UK. And you basically just build the hive, put it out in the forest with wax, and that attracts a wild swarm. And we usually have about 30 to 60 percent occupancy. Um, So the beekeepers only have to keep an eye on the sites and make sure they're not knocked over by animals, and open the hives to harvest the honey twice a year. And then they take out the bars which has ca- which have capped honey, replace them with empty bars, and you usually get about £20 of honey per year. Wow. And currently we've trained 150 beekeepers in 36 villages, 
with about 450 hives put out in the forest, but the demand is growing fast. Um, and a lot of charities teach people to keep bees, but not many take the whole process further. So we've also set up a processing centre run by local people and a bee farmers association, so mm. that this is totally managed by the local people, um, and you know all the benefit from the honey stays within the area. Um, we've also shown people how to make creams and ointments out of the wax and oil. That's Different very good. oils give different sort of um, properties. Mm. So it's really a, a very broad and holistic way of earning a living from the forest. Mm. And and how has it how has it impacted uh, th- these local people um, um, the the use of honey? Um, I would say the main impact has been on the actual production of the honey, if you see what I mean. They're, they're very poor people, and they will eat a little bit of the honey, but mostly they will sell it. And so there's the direct effects of earning money from the production and sale of the honey and of the creams. There's the skills in business management and managing their own affairs through a bee farmers association. But it's also had an amazing effect on the whole economy of the villages. So it's stimulated other businesses like carpenters to build the hives, tailors for protective suits, blacksmiths for hive tools. And it also had an effect on the environment with an increased bee population, less risk of burning down the trees. And one thing that we've been really impressed with, and it wasn't really something we were expecting, but the effect of women earning their own money in these communities has been really, really important and empowers the the group of women to work together. One group of women have set up a savings scheme and even managed sort of domestic problems, just in, generally increase their status within the, the community. So I think it, it's been quite a broad impact, the effect of earning money um, across the community. Excellent. Excellent. And um, so can you give us, please, a, a little bit on the medical perspective on the benefits of honey? Yes, I read the article with interest, and I think he's covered all the various areas very well. But mainly what we've been involved with has been the effect on wounds and burns. And mm. I noticed that that's not been so clearly covered in, in the article, but actually I suppose a, a wound is, and a burn are, are very similar, but... Burns have been particularly important in the area that we work in. A lot of people, um, you know, they use open fires for cooking and children in particular get burnt, unfortunately, quite frequently by um, pots going over and that sort of thing. Um, and I, I won't go through all the various yes. mechanisms for burns because it's very similar mm. to the effect of honey on wounds, which I presume you're talking about, although I can if you want to. But we've been working with the district medical officer and with the local community health workers. We've given out samples of honey. We've given out samples of the cream that you can make from the wax. Sure. It's very, very good as a skin moisturizer and can reduce scarring after um, a wound or a burn has healed. So that's also quite useful. Um, so it's relatively early days, I would say, in this particular area because the honey that was um, produced by honey hunting, climbing the tree, was far too dirty to use in this in this sort of capacity. Sure. But the clean honey from the hives, mm. we have found in other bees abroad projects like Uganda, but actually the hospitals have been one of the main um, customers for this because they trust the cleanliness of the honey. Yes. Um, and they can use it on wounds. So one initiative that we're doing is we're sending out to Sierra Leone, in fact it went out with the last shipment of equipment just after COVID, Yes. Um, is a packaging machine that will sort of make small, clean, sealed portions of honey in a, in a little single-use sachet, yes. which could be very appropriate for use on wounds. Excellent. Um, yeah, doctor, there was a, a talk a few years ago of, of bees, in particular honeybees, sort of dying out. What's the current situation with the uh, population of bees? Are they okay now? Is it on the increase? I I think it depends where you're talking about. Mm. I think in the area we work in, yes, I would say that there's a healthy bee population. Mm. And the advantage of putting the hives in the forest is that that 
preserves that population, Excellent. because obviously destroying the wild bee colonies damages it. Mm. Across um, America, I think there is still a significant problem with bee populations. My husband is a beekeeper as well, and he's, he's nodding vigorously at this. <laughs> um, in Europe, would you say that bee populations are stable or still there suffering? Are. There are a number of there are a number of issues, um, including uh, uh, Europe, the um, Asian Asian hornet, uh, the use of pesticides, mm. etc. I mean that's been quite exacerbated in the states because they do use pesticides a lot, yes. and that's thought to be responsible for a lot of colony colony loss. And they do manage their bees differently in in the states. They sort of, they use to uh, pollinate cr uh, cash crops. Are moved around a lot, which probably stresses the colonies as well. I see. I think one thing hmm. that is quite topical is there are European protections against a number of pesticides. That's and right. Yeah. Yes. And there is a little bit of worry that Brexit and you know changing the regulation in this country might lessen the protection for hmm. bees. And I think that's an important thing that we need to keep an eye on. Yes. And make sure that that doesn't happen. Uh, Dr. Hayward, just one last question. Um, it's amazing work that you're doing there, and uh, we are gr very grateful to you and, of course, uh, your husband for contributing uh, to this interview. But just one last question. If people wanted to find out a little bit more about the great work that you're doing or even even sort of um, possibly contributing to, to, to or making a donation to your charity, is there a website or is there anywhere we could go to find out more information about the great work that you're doing, please? Well, that's a, that's a very kind question. Um <laughs> Yes, we were, there's the two charities that we work with. Yes. Um, the the website for the local charity for Sierra Leone is roariswell.org.uk. So r o r y s w e l l dot co dot org dot uk and bees abroad. Um, it's about the same, but just Google bees abroad. Yeah, bees abroad is. is Basically, just B double -E -S -A -B -R -O -A -D. Yeah. and if they Google that, they will find all the various projects that these broad supports. Excellent! It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you, and of course to your husband this morning. We thank you for both for your contribution, and we wait, wish you a fast, fantastic day. And of course, uh, commend you on the great work that you're doing. Thank you again, and peace be upon you. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you for the opportunity. <laughs> okay, take care. Thank you. Bye bye now. Thank you. Bye. Bye. So oh two oh eight six eight seven seven eight seven eight is the number you need to ring. No, it's, a, it's a great phone call we just had, and, and I mean mm. it's a mm. it's it's a very interesting topic, and, mm. and you know people that are involved with bees, it's, yes. it's it's a whole way of life exactly, which is which is which has changed, which is revolves uh, around the bees. I mean, I went to um, Palestine mm. last year. Yes. And uh, there's a place in. Um, I'm trying to find out the mm. names uh, of the, the. It's between the mountains, um, uh, closer to the Syrian borders. Right, right. It's uh, the. Um, this, I'm going to search for the name. No worries, so yes. we went to a, a bee farm. Yes, yes. And there's a local Ahmadi there, a member of the community who right. has his own farm. Oh, and, fantastic! Uh, uh, it's it's amazing. He's got he's got um, it's. Uh, it was um it, we, you could see the mm. amount of uh of 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 work he had put in mm. um and i mean it, it was it, he he went through the whole like the the, the life cycle amazing uh, of a honey of, bee yeah. of, of a bee and then yeah. and then showed us the queen bees and and what the work is that they do yes um and and, um, and he, he showed us the medicinal pur the the benefits of that as well amazing yes um and me for example i've i've always suffered from hay fever Right, um, and um, and he was. We were talking about the medicinal birth purposes, and propolis comes up, mm -hmm. uh, and propolis mm. comes is is uh, is a medicinal uh, is is a medicine which comes from right right uh, which is made from from honey honey okay. and. Um, it was. Uh, it, it was. Uh, it was. This, the, he had many things from that. He, right. You had creams, ointments, fantastic, uh, which help he heal mm. wounds and stuff. Uh, and then he had these uh, these propolis drops mm. um, that you can put in 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 liquid. Mm. Um, and I've been using that, and I, and I have to say, it's it's helped uh, my hay fever. Fantastic. That's amazing. Uh, it's it's just beautiful how you see in nature, you know how that. Uh, 
God Almighty has already provided us the tools and the and the means of healing ourselves and the benefits, you know, of course you talk about food and other things, but this is just more than food. There's so many different properties to this uh, lovely honey. And I'll tell you one of the things that is, uh, I know like, a few presenters before coming on air <laughs> have a bit of honey. I know I definitely do, yeah. And uh, I'm, sure you, I'm sure you do as well because... Uh, it, it, it's it's very good for soothing the throat, especially if you get a, a dry cough. But it's uh, it's fantastic, and uh, uh, you know, thanks again to Dr. Haywood and uh, of course her husband for that that valuable uh, contribution to the interview. It's amazing, uh, like you said, the, all the different properties. That, and and you talk about uh, hay fever, so you know we were talking about how honey helps with um, respiratory infections as well. And uh, so most prescribed and over the counter preparations for coughing children are moderately effective but also carry the risk of adverse side effects. So a single dose of honey before bedtime was shown in recent studies to diminish cough and discomfort experienced by children and their parents. Another recent study also supported administering a few daily doses for relieving childhood cough. Other benefits of honey have shown that it's beneficial for improving oral uh, mucositis. Mucositis. <laughs> which is the inflammation of the oral cavity after radiotherapy. So in addition, honey has shown to improve healing after a tonsillectomy, uh, which is basically removing your tonsils, right? Yeah. So, and topically for some eye conditions, honey has also shown promise in several dermatological conditions. This is purported to be due to its repair and antimicrobial activity. Uh, and of course... So, you know, for centuries, pollen and its sweet product, honey, have provided nourishment for many life forms. Honey is as much in demand today as it was in ancient times. In the Holy Quran, it states, And thy Lord has inspired the bee, saying, Make thou houses in the hills and the trees and in the trellises which they build. There comes forth from their bellies a drink of varying hues. Therein is a cure for a people who reflect that's taken from the Holy Quran, chapter 16, verses 69 to 70. So the Holy Quran most beautifully states that surely in that is a sign for people who reflect. The meaning of this expression is deep in that the honeybee is a wonder of nature. So again, you know, it's, it's such an amazing thing that, you know, is you know, mentioned in the Holy Quran. Amazingly, Allah revealed to the bee and this revelation is not something that is shared by other animals. It is entirely attributable. Uh, beautiful to this divine revelation that the honeybee was able to follow the path of Allah with complete submission. Allah most beautifully directs a message to mankind that from the honeybee's bellies comes forth a serum which is of different colors but each has the inherent quality of a cure. Um, and of course I mean based on the customs of the Holy Prophet um, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him it, it is evident mm. that, prof, uh, that the Holy Prophet Muhammad uh, the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to eat on a regular basis mm. uh, honey. Yes. Uh, as Aisha, his wife, narrates that the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam enjoyed a, enjoyed sweet things in his food, such as honey. Right. And from the uh, the Quranic evidence and uh, and the narrations, it is prudent to suggest that honey has a lot of benefits and curative properties. Yes. Interestingly, honey has been known for its healing properties since ancient times, and it's something that we mentioned that from around. Uh, 2600 BCE mm. um, in Egyptian scriptures and scrolls um, it's, it's been mentioned of the benefits of honey um, and uh, as uh, just to conclude and wrap up this 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 topic um, we uh, have uh, the, uh, the, just, just um, an extract from a Friday sermon um, which was held on the 19th of December 2008 um, by His Holiness, uh, the fifth Caliph of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, and he spoke about the the divine attribute uh, of God Almighty, known as the Healer. Um, and he's he's he he's, he states, and I'm just going to quote here an extract of his sermon, and he states that uh, God has provided cure for every illness, and many herbs and insects contain such cures. Um, one such example is that of a honeybee. And to describe the medicinal purposes of honey, the Holy Quran has used the term Shafi'ul Linnas, meaning therein is cure for men. Sure. And, and research on honey has provided many benefits to the world. These days, however, the honeybee is being afflicted by a certain disease causing germ 
uh, which is causing their widespread death and the researchers are concerned that if they cannot find a cure soon honeybees may become extinct worldwide on, on or in certain parts of the world in a matter of few years right uh, his owners however provided his insight into this matter saying that since honey has been mentioned in the holy quran which is a book of all times yes for all times it will never perish meaning uh, honeybees will mm. never perish however it may disappear from certain areas as a form of punishment since since the system of revelation is also linked to the honeybee god will certainly make it a sign for those who believe in his unity so i mean for, uh, in, in terms of uh, i mean coming from a muslim perspective yes. we have a lot of uh, there's a great connection mm. which we have with, with the honeybee yes. uh, and of course the benefits of honey uh, itself but of course i mean that's something which uh, will, will take many uh, a long time to actually delve on mm. um, and discuss uh, but of course uh, for our listeners out there if you do want to get involved you can call us on 020 8687 uh, we will be going for the Eight o'clock morning news uh, in just a few moments. Um, so, dear listeners, um, as mentioned, this is a live interaction uh, interactive show. If you'd like to get involved, you can also contact us on our uh, uh, Twitter handle, which is at Voice of Islam UK, or alternatively, you can give us a ring on zero two zero eight six eight seven seven eight seven eight. So, we just wanted to thank uh, Dr. Curtis um, uh, Kath Curtis Haywood for her contribution and of course her husband as well who um, uh, shared their knowledge with us with regards to the honeybee uh, there are many shows that can be found on our website which is voiceofislam.co.uk uh, today being Friday